Hi, in this clip we'll talk about low bounds for comparison-based sorting. So we have learned uh, uh, two algorithms for sorting. One is merge sort, another is quick sort. Okay, and, and, and both of them run in time or in log n. In the worst case for merge sort and for the expected uh, for the randomized quick sort, the expected running time is n log n. Okay, so the question is: Is this best possible? Okay, so in this clip, we'll try to answer this question. Okay, so um, let let's think a little bit. So we we make a few assumptions so that uh, it's easier for us to proceed on, but it won't really hurt us. So we assume that that when we try to sort a list of number okay when we sort n numbers all number are distinct okay so we assume that okay when we when we want when we move on okay right so let's think a little bit about how to uh, how to sort uh, a few numbers first. Suppose I only have maybe uh, two numbers. Let's start with two numbers. So I have a1 and a2. How can I sort these two numbers? It's easy, right? So I, I, I make a comparison for a1. Is a1 less than a2? Right. And if if this is true, then I say, oh, okay, so the sort, the solution the sorted solution is this. Otherwise, if it, if this is false, then I say okay, the the solution would be I should start with a two and then a a one, right? And and you know, if we, we want to sort two number two numbers, you cannot do that without you know making no comparisons, right? You need to compare them, okay? If you want to do comparison based sorting, um, okay. So let's try to look at a bigger example. So suppose I have a1, a2, and then a3. So how can I sort these three numbers? So I may start with a1, comparing a1 and a2. Okay, so if this is yes, what should I do next? I might, now I know that a1 is less than a2, but I don't know, you know, where a3 should be, right? Now, right now, there are three possible uh, places for A3. It can be the smallest, it can be the largest, or it can be in the middle. So let's let's try to do that. So let's compare A1. Is A1 less than A3? Right. And then if the answer is no, then I know that A3 is smallest. So my sorted list would be like that. Otherwise, I know that A3 is, is is larger than A1, right? Then I need to figure out the 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 rank, the order of A3 and A2. So I compare A3. Is A3 less than A2? If that's true, then I know it's A1, A3, A2. Otherwise, it's A1, A2. A3. Okay. Now I can do something here as well. Uh, I, I would have some other, you know, comparisons. And, and for each of these uh, comparisons, okay, this is the, the maybe the comparison notes. And I, 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 I make some comparison and then I, then I know um, from that it leads me to different uh, uh, results, different s solutions. Okay. All right. So now, uh, if you look at this, then uh, you can see that if the input, if the actual sorted solution is this one, if we follow this, so this, if you look at this uh, chart, this graph, it shows how you would uh, decide which the sorted sequence is for the, for for the given input right 
you give them this and it as the input and you, you don't look at the actual value of a1 a2 and a3 you just make comparisons and if if you follow this scheme okay and if the the answer is this then what do you do it's like yeah you go along this path and then reach the solution here so this is the solution that you need and if you do this then to get this solution you make how many comparisons A comparison that, that you made you've made so it's one and two right and and we know that if we follow this scheme there are some sorted solution say this one so let me do it in blue this one that would take three comparisons because you have to go along this way and then until you reach here right so for f so if you look at any sorting algorithms that made decision based on based on comparisons it's going to be if you you know try to write it down all, all the decisions that the algorithm has made you end up having something like like this tree okay this is called in computer science this is called decision tree decision tree okay and and if you look at any of the leaves so these are the solutions okay these are the answer for the algorithms you can figure out how many comparison that you have to make until you reach this point okay all right so for a fix any fix a fixed decision tree can we figure out which which solution require the maximum number of comparisons yeah we can just take a look at all the, these leaves right and and look at the the depth okay so this the depth of this is uh, three comparison one two three but for this you only require two comparisons so in the worst case you might you might end up here here or here or this configuration this sorting this sequence so you require three comparisons right but this is for a fix so if you have three numbers okay if you have three numbers and follow this decision three you require need you need three comparisons in the way in the worst case all right but is this is this the best possible decision tree this is the best one maybe there might be some really good decision tree where you only need you know say two comparisons is it possible to have that okay so let's try to look at look a little bit uh, if you have three numbers okay how many solutions do we have so it's uh, a1 a2 a3 that that's one possible se sorting sequence sorted sequence maybe it's a1 a3 a2 you can you know permute all this and you get three factorials possible sorted solution okay and 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 this this is a constraint right so whatever tree that you have it's going to be a binary tree right because uh it, this is the decision node and we assume that all the number are distinct so you you compare two things you either get that this is true or it is, it is false so you have a tree you have a binary tree and in the end you should have you know you should have at least uh, what is this uh, three factorial so it's one times two times so it's six so you have so these are the leaves these are the solutions and the leaves the number of leaves should be at least six right because otherwise your algorithm wouldn't be able to you know output every possible 
permutation of the input. So is this a good tree? One, two, three, four, five. It is not, right? A good tree should have at least six uh, leaves like that. Okay, so what's the depth? How many comparison that do we have? One, two, three. So this this uh, this tree also requires three uh, comparisons, right? Can we make a tree? Okay, a, a binary tree such that in the end you have one, two, three, four, five, six leaves. And the depth is only two, right? Because the the this one, the lowest one, the deep the deepest one de uh determine the maximum number of comparisons in the worst case that you need. So you want you want the depth to be two, okay? And and if you want to beat, uh, so this is this require three comparisons. So if, if you want to beat three, you need two, right? However, for two binary tree, depth of two binary tree, if you do, if you look at that, then how many possible leaves can we have? So the first one, and you can have only four leaves, right? So this shows that if you have three numbers, it is not possible to have, you know, this shallow tree that outputs every permutations of the input. All right. So three is the best possible, and 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 this this intuition uh, works so well that in 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 the general case. So let's let me try to look at the general case. Okay. So in the general case, before we actually prove it, let's look a little bit. So in the general case, you have n numbers. Okay. So how many how many possible uh, permutation do we have? So you have n factorial possible permutation. Okay. All right. Since uh, so, if the tree has has depth, okay. So so now so suppose we have a tree, okay, and in the leaves you should have how many do we have? We need we need n factorial leaves, okay. So let's make a little some 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 assumptions, okay. So suppose our tree might look like this. It might not be balanced. It might look like like that. Okay? And if if this is the the so this, these are the leaves, okay? And this is the depth of the tree. So this require 1 2 3 4, okay? This is f the the f the height equal 4 and so the height equal falls we can without increasing the height we can make the tree you know complete right like that and and by and by doing that we only increase the number of leaves right all right so let's let's try to do some some simple calculations so suppose we have a tree we have a decision tree for sorting in numbers and the height is its height is h so how many possible leaves how many leaf is is that is there can we have the maximum number of leaves so the number of leaves is at most how many two to the edge, right? Right with this logic. So if the height is edge, then uh, the leaf is at most at, at most this. Okay. However, what do we know about the leaves? So if you wanna output output all possible combinations, so this should be. The number of leaves should be large enough, right? So this should be at most number of leaves. Okay, so 
so we have the in this direction so we have n factorial here okay now let's try to solve this to get the uh, edge get some bar on edge so we know that you have you need this many leaf this many leaves so leaf and this is at most 2 to the edge okay we can take the log right take the logarithm so you have take log base 2 so you have edge has to be at least log base 2 of n factorial okay and this can be shown pretty easily that this this is o of uh, a big omega of n log n right so this is this roughly is the proof that uh, you you really need this this much uh, comparisons. So let's try to write the proof for more formally. Okay. So th let me state state the theorem. So uh, any comparison base sorting algorithm require n log n big omega n log n comparison okay so the proof okay so since we have each uh, each sorted solution correspond to a leaf in the decision tree okay and and there are n factorial solutions the number of leaves is at more at least to a so the number of leaves has to be at least uh, again in factorial right because two different different solutions cannot you know two different uh one leaves cannot answer to two solutions so the number of of leaves might has to be at least this this many okay it may it may be larger because if you ha if you make some comparison and 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 maybe there are many parts that lead to the same sorting sorted sequence okay so so now so this is this is the first part and then uh then we need to bow the height okay since a decision tree of height h has at most 2 to h leaves we have we have what uh, you have n factorial to be at most the number of leaves right so this is the same thing that we did informally so we have this okay solving the inequality we get that h is in lock in okay now so we we we've just talked about the decision tree so we need to talk about the the algorithms okay any comparison base 
sorting algorithm so let me know know that any comparison based sorting algorithm correspond to to some decision tree therefore it requires you know this many in log n comparisons as well so that's that's pre that's pretty much the proof all right so uh it, at the end let's try to do some let's try to show that uh so that's that's it that's the proof but let's try to show that log of n factorial is of uh, big omega of n log n. Okay. So how can we show this Next example? Okay. So we want a lower bound. So we can we can uh, make a lot of you know uh, approximate. We can do a lot of approximation, right? So let's look at this log log n factorial. So you have log of n times n plus minus 1 times n minus 2 times blah 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 up to n up to 1 right and this is uh, now so this equals the logs of the product is the, the sum of the logs so it's log n plus log n minus 1 plus log n minus 2 blah blah up to log of 1 right. right okay so let's do some approximate okay so this is okay so this is at least okay so n is larger than n over 2 right so let's let me do this so this is n over 2 okay so I trim I I I, I so this is at least n over two. So I I approximate the first n over two terms by by this much, and then the later terms I would say just say log of of one. So the 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 last n over two terms, I say log of one, right? Since the log is monotone, monotonically increasing, so this works, and this is uh, this is zero, okay, and this is what was what are these, okay, so I have so this is n over two times log n over two, and this equals n over two log n minus log 2 right so it's n over 2 log n minus n over 2 and you can see that this is clearly a big over graph n log n okay so that's it that's that's how you can see that the log of factorial is this okay all right so that's it for this clip um, thank you